Hello folks, it's Jane here. I'm up at the plot and sitting on a couple of cushions because this table's so high. Um, but it's coming up to the end of May now and it's the time of year, it's the start of the really busy season in the garden. And to be honest, my mind has been so addled with the amount of things I've got to do. Um, so things like potting on, finishing things off, planting up, all these different things that I've decided to do an experiment instead. So I'm not going to do any of the stuff I intended to do this weekend um, because I had a bright idea. Now, I'll be honest, it's not my own idea, so it's not really my idea, is it? But mm, we're going to try it. Um, some time ago, Danny over at the Grapevine allotment suggested, and I mentioned this in my tour, suggested that in order to combat the flea beetle, we should plant our plants, our brassicas, in hanging baskets, because that way the flea beetle isn't going to be able to reach, basically, unless it's a Houdini beetle, it's not going to be able to jump up that high. So I thought today, I'd give it a go. I did say I would and I'm gonna. So we've actually got some pak choy planted out in one of the in the asparagus bed at the end of the asparagus bed and I'll show you what's happened to that already but what I'm going to do is I am going to sow and plant up some of the pak choy we've already got um, alongside some rocket because our rocket always gets addled wherever we plant it always gets addled by flea beetles and some radish just because they're quick growing we'll be able to pull them and repeat sow them so yeah i mean i'm not sure if the flea beetle is just a uk visitor let me know if you're in the us do you suffer from it i know you've got other things like vine borers which i'm becoming more and more aware of to deal with but um it's basically a small beetle like it says that jumps like a flea and there are various ways um tried and tested ways i mean it's very very easy to just reach for the bug spray and give it a good spray the organic way that people talk about of dealing with it and i must admit i've never tried it is to um, get a piece of card or a piece of wood put some grease on it and then just pull it over the top of your plants and the flea beetles sensing movement the flea beetles will jump and they get stuck to the grease and then you can dispose of the card or the wood accordingly well you probably know this by now but I'm a bit of a wuss when it comes to things like that and I'd be apologizing to that many beetles it just it would take too long so I think if we can just put it out of harm's way or put it out of the way of temptation for the beetle um, it's probably going to be the best idea so in front of me I have got quite a big hanging basket no idea what the diameter is but it's a big one okay any hanging basket would do it's got a chain on to hang it with I was I'm looking over there because I was considering hanging it over on the arch but Mike hasn't braced that yet so <laughs> You know, it could be that a strong wind and it'll all come forward. So I think maybe what I'll do is just hang off one of the struts in the fruit cage and just see how it gets on. So first things first, I'll talk a bit more about it as I'm planting up, but first things first, I've got to find something to line it with. quite pleased with that you know it's um using up an old compost bag um which i realized was the wrong shape so we've done two layers and fortunately i had my garden pegs in the shed which to be honest i've been looking for at home for a long time <laughs> but these can come in handy for all sorts of things so yeah that was useful so that'll just keep the um plastic to the sides while i fill it up but before i go any further i've got to make sure 
that, make sure there's nothing on the other side, make sure that I pierce it. Oh, the hurry, hurry. Might have to do something a bit more pointy, actually. <gasps> Maybe the hurry, hurry isn't up to the job. No. Okay, I'm going to get something more pointy. Pierce a few holes in it, and then, of course, obviously, it'll be drainage. And then it's time to fill it up. Okay. Let's find something pointy. there's been a bit of a mishap in that um, I filled this up and was talking about it for quite a long time and then realised I hadn't pressed record on the camera so I've emptied the uh, previous soil out and I will now refill this hanging basket <laughs> happens every time I keep saying it six years I still haven't learned right let me let me tell you what I've already told you but I'll actually record it this time okay there's the basket I've dipped me holes in I'm using, oh crikey, quite heavy, um, a peat-free compost, um, which I've got to be honest, looks pretty good. If I show you, certainly compared to, at, at home I'm using up some of the uh, multi-purpose compost from last year, but if I show you that, it's quite nice and that's from our local, wait, our local um, discount shop should I call it. So it wasn't over expensive. Because I think that's what's putting a lot of people off peat-free compost at the moment. It's just the price. Because uh, the mechanics of actually producing the amount that we need are not yet there. And so, yeah, demand is higher than supply. And then you start to get prices going through the roof. It's happening with music at the minute. But yeah, we'll give this a go. As I say, it's all part of an experiment. If your time is precious and your space is precious, I would suggest <laughs> you don't do it. No, I don't mean that. I don't mean that at all. I mean, give it a go. You can only try, can't you? It's all about experimentation and finding out what's best for you. But actually, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sniff some compost on camera. It smells like compost. Okay, which is a good, that's a good thing, by the way. Okay, here we go. This is why I've got these pegs around the side because obviously the weight of the compost, this is quite a big basket, the weight of the compost is going to press um, any folds or anything out of the plastic and I want to make sure that I've got at least, I would say a couple of inches of the rim around the edge and I'll tell you why in a minute. So there we go, that was quick wasn't it? I think that's okay. Right, before I put my seeds in, I'm going to give it a water. I've got to be honest, um, the, the water butts are pretty much empty. We've had such a dry, cold April. I'm saying cold, we've had lovely sunny days, but very cold nights. Um, but yeah, we're, we're due for quite a lot of heavy rain over the next day or two. And actually it'll do us the world of good because it'll replenish the water butts. But a little bit more... And what this will do is just settle the soil and it's always good to water the soil how can I put this beneath the plants before you put them in and the seeds because you want the roots to go down okay it's I know when you first put them in you're going to be putting them um, watering on the top but always try try not to water the leaves try and water the soil but you do not want to be encouraging really the roots once they get established to start coming up to get the water you want them to go down and create stronger plants so right that to me is ready to start sowing i have got my pak choy or as i believe you say in the states bok choy bok choy pak choy okay um and i'm going to put that in the middle this is called something is it shanghai i think it's shanghai of course we haven't got the the thing on the top that tells you but this is shanghai where's it gone there it is <laughs> that would have been good if we just i just have to pretend to sow seeds i bet people do that you know if they don't show you the seeds close up they're just sprinkling things in midair right okay you'll find all your brassica seeds 
are very very much of a muchness in that I'll come and show you they are small round things okay small round things it's a good way to describe seed isn't it it does apply to rather more than uh, brassicas but there you go right I'm going to put pak choy in the middle and what I'm hoping to do is probably not keeps repeat sowing the pak choy I might do it where uh, you just take off the outside leaves and let it keep growing quite a few of them in the middle da -da 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 -da. in a generous circle have you ever heard of a mean circle <laughs> this one's a generous one the only thing is you can't see where you've put them especially with my eyesight right okay let me concentrate probably got way too many there I'll pop a couple more in okay that's them and then on the outside or rather the outskirts of those I'm going to put my rocket which is just mixed and again rocket is something I absolutely love but every year it gets I'm gonna is it exaggerating to use the word decimated I don't think it is when you want your rocket and there's such fine lovely leaves and they've been you know they've been made to look like cobwebs because of the flea beetle it's not what you want doesn't look very tasty doesn't look very nice so hopefully we'll be able to get a nice healthy crop of rocket from here again something it's become very popular in the supermarkets now and you'll get rocket mixed with spinach or with watercress more to come on watercress soon Mike's got a plan okay um, but what I will be doing with that is uh, re sowing it so as I pick some I'll put some more in or at least at regular intervals and then last but not least <coughs> I've got some lovely radish from the seed box which I don't know if I've mentioned before but Joanne Murray um, sent me an absolutely fantastic it was like a starter pack of all sorts of seeds from the seed box shop and we have used all of them apart from the radish and this one is called let me get this right cherry bell so Joanne this is your cherry bell coming in and these seeds actually you think radish are the smaller oh there goes some that's ruined my generous circle that's a muddly circle these seeds are actually bigger you're on the other side of the dahlia bed so that's as close as I can get the general idea they're still small and brown okay these are going to go around the outside I'm not bothered about doing them singly you can do radish in clumps and just pull them as you need them um, I never have much luck with radish I know it's one of those things that people say everybody can grow not me okay and I do like it I do like it so we'll put those around the outside and we'll see when these seedlings start to come up just how precise my circles have been these will get each time a couple get pulled up I will put some more in because you certainly get plenty of seeds so I mean the thing is with the flea beetle it's not just the beetle itself it's the larvae as well and the larvae can eat oh 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 concentrate Jane there we go the larvae can nibble away at the roots which ultimately weakens the plant the flea beetle unless you've got terrible terrible damage or unless you've got a huge infestation they don't do much damage it's just unsightly really you know you can still eat the food as long as you've made sure they've usually done the damage they've had they've had the nibble they've had their fun and then hopped off somewhere else or jumped off or whatever fleas do so let me know do let me know what you do about it do you get flea beetle is it something you've ever had a bother with is it something you've never heard of let me know in the comments below and let me know if you do get it how you deal with it have you got a method that's do you use the card and the grease do you just cover them because that's the other thing you could just cover it with netting if you wanted to but I just thought I'd give this a go and see if it works so I'm going to give another sprinkle of water on the top 
just to settle that very fine layer of compost on the top. Press it down first. No air pockets in there. You want the seed to be making contact with the soil. And a sprinkle, if I had a sprinkler on. I have got a lovely watering can at home, one of those nice metal ones with a lovely sprinkler on, but I don't know. I need to bring it up, don't I? It's sort of, <laughs> I don't like to use it. It's the best. Nuts, isn't it? I'll bring it up because at least it has got the sprinkler. So, oh, that was meant to be a sprinkle and it was more of a flood. Well, there we go. There's my circles out of sync already, but there you go. That's as much as it's going to get. As I say, I've left a couple of inches around the edge here. So hopefully when I take the pegs off, it's not suddenly going to go, Ooh. and also when you water it, you don't want your soil to all be washing over the edges. So that's experiment part one. I'll show you where I'm going to hang it. Okay, here it comes. Woo. <laughs> Tripods, fruit pages. Oh my goodness. There we go. It's going to go just there. It's um, <laughs> the net over the top of the fruit cage still isn't on. That was one of the jobs for today that I, I was talking about at the beginning, but we'll see. We'll see if we get it on. Probably won't. But there we go. That is now there. In fact, yeah, it's more out of the way there than it would be here because if I am harvesting, she says laughingly, um, currants at the end there, I'm going to stand up and bump my head, whereas at least here it's in the middle and I can walk around it. So yes, what do you think? Do you think it's going to work? It'd be an interesting thing to keep an eye on. It will be... <laughs> Shall I come this side? I'll come this side. It will be something that um, you can... Ah, that's good. Sorry, I've just been distracted. Can you see the water coming out the bottom? That's good. That shows me dibby bits are working. Um, obviously, once the net's over, it means the birds won't be able to get it as well. Because at the moment, yeah, it's like saying to the birds, here we go, I've planted some nice salad for you. Come and help yourself. So, whereas you're getting away from the flea beetle, you know, you've got your, your nice, little, <laughs> nice little pigeons thinking you've been very generous. But yeah. We'll give it a go. We'll give it a go. As I say, it's all thanks to um, an idea spot by Danny. Do go over and say hello to him at the Grapevine Allotment. It's a fairly new channel, but he's got so many things that have made me go away and think, oh, I'm going to give that a go. So yeah, go and say hello. I'll leave the link below. And uh, yeah, let me know what you think. Come along and say hello on Instagram come along and say hello on Facebook. And if you haven't subscribed yet, thank you to all of you who have. I know I keep saying it, but it does mean a lot. Press the subscribe button and the bell, which will give you a notification each time a video goes up. I'll be putting videos up all around me at the moment. Um, so yeah, go and check some of them out if you want to see more stuff from the allotment. And I hope you have a nice few days in your own gardens and own green spaces. See you again very soon. Bye for now.